Well, welcome everyone to building your first process in the new process builder. So here I am in a Winter 15 uh, release org that I have process builder enabled on. You can find it under the create menu along with all the other workflow actions and flow triggers. The new process. So I already have a few processes created and uh, what we're going to do is create a brand new one here. Now process builder is using a new uh, feature from Salesforce called Aura and in this release order it is running a little bit slow so please bear with me as we wait for things to load up but what we're going to see on the screen is a new area for our processes to be built at each process can have essentially multiple workflow rules built in um, within it and here we can see as the process builder loaded up uh, the processes I have created and let's go ahead and start a new process. So we give it a pro uh, the process a name, uh, just like we would a workflow rule. So we're going to call this opportunity notification. And as I would always say, please put it in the description. This is a example for the Wizard News. And say now, unlike workflow rules where if you have multiple rules you have to fire off in a process say you want to have a notification go off for every single stage change that you have uh, all those criteria are going to be held within a single process uh, processes will have uh, a list of essentially workflow rule criteria is going down the list so here's the wonderful page. We have a nice little example. We have to choose the object that our processes will be firing under. We have our criteria. If it matches the criteria, the actions that it will do when it goes ahead and uh, succeeds. If it doesn't meet true, it goes down to the bottom of here. We don't have any additional criteria yet, so it stops. But let's start and add our object. Uh, here we go from our object and opportunity. We're going to do an opportunity. Select we can pick when it's created or created or added, just like with the workflow rule, and save. Now we can start adding criteria. A criteria, like I said, is very similar to a workflow rule. The difference here is we can have a chain of criteria going down below. And order is very important because the first true, the first set of criteria diamonds here that meet, uh, that turn in true, are is the process the action that will actually fire. It will not go down and look at the additional criteria that you may have beneath that. So it works somewhat similar to an assignment rule in that effect. But let's go ahead and criteria. We're gonna give a criteria name and we'll just say uh, first stage notification. And just like with workflow rules, we can set where filters are correct, where formula value is true, or we can say, hey, always execute the actions. What is nice is we can say, well, it has to meet all the actions that we have listed down below, or it has to meet just one of the criteria. Well, let's start by picking our stage. So we select our field opt options. We are presented with a list of fields. And you can see here that I could, if I wanted to, grab information off of the account and grab account fields as part of the criteria here. But we're gonna go right down to stage. Select our stage and insert. Now if you're using a pick list field you get this nice little handy drop down list here and so we're going to do is prospecting and then we can add additional criteria going down the row. Uh, when you're doing criteria uh, uh, maybe for example we're going to want to do this where the amount is greater than five dollars because I sell a lot of stuff. Um, you have a choice here. You could either do the handwritten, which is that little pencil icon we see here, or you can click on that, and now you can select a different field. So this is where we could actually have related field criteria. This is different than what we could do with the workflow rules, uh, with the trick that we would have to use formulas for a workflow rule. But here we can go through and say, well, you know, I would only want to fire this if the amount on the opportunity is greater than, say, uh, a theoretical amount that's off the account ID, which we don't have. I don't actually need any additional criteria for this first rule, so we're just going to go ahead and hit the exit, delete that. Again, just like with the workflow rules, we have this wonderful things. If we want to have this 
fire only when a record is created or edited, and then subsequently meets the criteria, I always like this one. Click yes and save. Once we've saved this criteria, we can now add our actions. And we have lots of actions to do. Uh, because we're doing a notification, we'll probably want to put a notification action here. And there's two different types of uh, notifications we can do. We have the good old-fashioned email alert, uh, which why don't we start with that. And here we give our action name, and so we'll say prospect notification. And then we have to type the email alert. This is where it is different from uh, workflow rules. With a workflow rule, you could go through and say, hey, I want to do a new email alert, and then we can create, go to the email alert screen and then come back and it's automatically added. Here we do need to create the email alert ahead of time before we can reference in the action. So if I do a little search here, I can say, oh, I don't actually have an email alert for um, prospect here, but I do have one for closed one notification, I can pick that. Well, I don't want to set a closed one notification for a prospecting notification stage. That would be oh, silly. So let's do a different notification, and let's choose post to chatter. This is different than what we can do with workflow rules, so we're going to do chatter post to, and let's say group. Here, we can select to choose either to the record, so in this case it would be the opportunity record, the user, which would be the probably a particular user, for example, it could be um, the opportunity owner, or we could just search for one here, that's pretty nice. But let's do chatter group, and I actually have uh, a chatter group out there already for notifying sales managers. So now we have a little box that we can put in our information. So we can say, hey managers, the opportunity, and now I need the opportunity name. So we're going to click on insert field, scroll down until we get opportunity name. I think I missed it. There it is. There we go. And insert has been moved to prospecting. Please do what you do best. Blah, 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 blah. We can also do uh, add topic. So let's add the topic prospecting. And no topic is created here. So just like email alerts, you have to have the prospect over there. But we can mention a user. So let's go ahead and mention Shelly. Uh, Shelly, or the awesome, Shelly is the product manager for um, Process Builder. So thank you very much, Shelly, for this great tool. So let's go ahead and save our action. And we can add additional actions as we will. But I'm going to skip that, and we'll move on and add another criteria diamond. So once this is finished loading, we will take a look and see that we have one action underneath the immediate section. Ta-da, and we can see the nice little chatter bubble here with chatter post to group. Let's add a new criteria. And this time, let's also pick where the stage is. Insert. And do closed one. Close one notification, give our criteria name. Yes, I want a criteria. Yes, I want everything. Yes, and save. So let's go back and do that close one email notification that we didn't do in our last criteria because this is for prospecting and that would be silly. So we're going to go ahead and click add an action here. Select our type, email alert, select email notification or one and we're going to select our email notification and save. And now we'll have one action underneath. Now, let's say we also wanted to do chatter post. Unlike workflow rules, we can't reuse the same action over and over and over again. Um, with the exception, of course, email alerts, you'd be able to use those references. So if I wanted to do this exact same chatter post we did up in our first stage notification, I would have to recreate the post down here for that immediate action, which is a little disappointing. But, uh, you know, for a first run, this is pretty cool. So now we can do other items here. We can go ahead and create a record. And let's go ahead and create a contract. Doesn't that sound fun? Create contract. Select. 
And now we can put our wonder little fields here and we're gonna do um, the related list. So we can pick the account ID of the opportunity. Click. There's the oh, arrow, come on, there we go. Account ID, insert. And we can add additional rows fields here. So maybe we would like to put the uh, date, contract start date as the close date of the opportunity. And we can go on and add fields as we needed to. We'll go ahead and hit save. But what if we want to do something else? Well, what if we want to go update a field? Well, we can still do that. We have all the other actions that we have available. The difference with Process Builder is you can update almost anything you want. Uh, you could either launch a flow to do a whole series of updates, um, or you could do update records, and now we have our choice. You'll notice that we have this wonderful list here. Well, I could update a field on the account by clicking the little arrow, or from, uh, to the campaign, or to the related contract. I could also do an update to child records, looking at this with the opportunity line items. The trick here is you would have to run every single, uh, make the same change across every single button. Uh, or we could submit for approval. We could do um, quick actions, which are the wonderful little quick actions that we can do for, for chatter. Uh, we can launch a flow, create a record, all very cool. We can also do scheduled actions, and this is basically time-based workflow where we can do on or after a particular trigger. So we can say, you know, hey, after this close date by three days, uh, we want to go fire a whole bunch of different records. So maybe we want to go ahead and create a task to say, hey, we need to have a task uh, to remind people to go and make sure the contract has been filled out or that uh, we are uh, have informed the client that we have just won, that uh, they need to meet with the kickoff team for delivery. Uh, so we could create those records or we could do any of the other wonderful actions here. So this is Process Builder in its basis. We can go through and add tons of criteria here. The only thing we have to keep in mind is it will only go down to the first criteria that matches and that will go through. So if you do want to have a whole bunch of different processes firing off with, with the same criteria, you do need to have different processes for that. But you could do a lot of actions chained into a single criteria list. Um, I have not found what the limit is. It's a lot. Um, once you have your wonderful criteria, you can go ahead and make any name changes that you want with the properties. You can save it or activate. Now the one trick that you have here is you can deactivate this, but you cannot delete this until 12 hours has gone by after you do the activation date. And the reason for this is that Process Builder is actually building a visual workflow behind the scenes to control this. And visual flow has this wonderful little requirement that you have to wait 12 hours after the deactivation. So we can continue to build out as many processes as you want. I really like the Process Builder for, uh, for a couple of things. One is I have tons of different actions that we can do, which is very powerful. This will effectively eliminate a lot of the triggers that I have to write now. I could also put, um, a, define a process and have all my wonderful criteria in one spot. I really like that because I can see everything that's happening, all the different actions and the number of actions and when they're going to happen on one screen. Whereas if I have a whole bunch of different uh, workflow rows going off together that really are one process, like notifications for every single stage, I have to drill into each individual workflow rule to take a look at those actions. And that is just annoying to me. So that's Process Builder. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you find it beneficial. And I uh, hope everyone's having a great Dreamforce. Take care.